Hey guys, how are you? Good, good, how are you? good. I'm good, thank you. Thanks for receiving me. So, maybe we can start by uh, knowing who you are. Can you introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is Andy Lamoff, and uh, I'm 22 years old. I'm originally from Haiti, and um, I studied at Pace University here in New York, and then went to Babson for my master's degree, and that's where I met these guys. So I'm uh, Christoph. I'm uh, originally from uh, Belgium. I used to study uh, back in Leuven. I did this economics, but then I ended up doing a year of entrepreneurship and uh, uh, messing up with these guys. So, uh... And I'm Johnny. I'm originally from Indonesia. I did my bachelor's in Boston University and then continued to the master's of entrepreneurship as well with these guys, and that's where we all met and started this venture. Okay, so how did you get the idea to start Bamboo Tori? Well, it, it, it began as a project in school. Um, we had to think of an idea for a feasibility analysis. And uh, we all have uh, interest in food, and we were thinking of this concept that we, we were aware of, that originated in Singapore, actually. Um, and we decided that we would like to test the possibility uh, venturing into New York City with that concept and you know we saw that there was an opportunity and we did the research and you know the professor was also very interested in what we were trying to do and it all became a very successful project and we started. So when did you start and how long did it take? Uh, so we um we got uh, access to the store the beginning of September, so we actually graduated last uh, August and uh, in the meanwhile we found this spot and uh, we were planning to open up the beginning of October. Uh, some things uh, were a little delayed, but um, in the end we started with this venture mid-October, serving customers it's a delicious yakitori and uh, ever since, so it's been eight months and uh, ever since people have been loving our food and trying to rescue us. All right. But from idea to conception, it took us about seven months, basically, in terms of research, in terms of finding the space, um, negotiating, um, thinking whether the concept should work this way or that way. It took about seven to eight months, and then still another seven months later to perfect it to where we are now. So was it difficult? More difficult than uh, what you thought? Oh yes, there's just too many things that you can't think of in events. Yes, such as? Such as um, the operations, for example. If you do not do it at hand, um, you know, in action, you just can't uh, predict as much as you expect. Um, so it's sort of, um, you have to improve as you move along. Unless you have a ton of money and you can practice for six months and you know open six months later. Sure, some restaurants do that, uh, but obviously our budget was a lot more limited being young entrepreneurs. Yeah. So you did not go to culinary school. How did you learn really how to cook? Because sometimes uh, I came a few times and I saw you uh, in the kitchen. So how did you do that? How did you learn? Well, all of this is made possible because of our machine that automates our operations. And uh, our, everything gets done in the machine about 80% and we just finish it off on the grill. So it makes it easy so you don't need someone that's like, that I went to culinary school to, to, to make it. Okay. Can you explain the cooking process? You explained to me last time, but I think it would be interesting maybe for the viewers. Yes, um, our Yakitori grill, this machine that comes from uh, Japan, what it does basically with an infrared system, it enables us to cook the meat. We put, we, it has handles, we just put the stick in the handle and it goes around in the rotations and we, there's heating plates that goes up to 560 degrees and then it cooks the meat very, like, uh, very well, it keeps the moisture, it makes it, uh, and then after that, after it goes to the cycle, and then we put it on the grill, that's it. Okay, so you cook to order? Yes, we cook to order. Fresh order. Yeah, in regard to the, uh, to the cooking and to the preparation process, which is which regards more of an, uh, an interest in culinary school, I would say, we partner up with uh, two chefs 
one uh, Japanese chef that Johnny knew to his family. They uh, worked on uh, the recipes for uh, the yakitori sauce. Uh, they, they did all kind of testings for at least 150 people. And then um, once we were really working and proceeding on, on this venture, we managed to partner up with a famous uh, chef, a chef that won uh, the Chopped uh, TV program uh, twice. And uh, we gave him some sweat equity in return for his expertise, some of his recipes for the meatballs, uh, his connections with suppliers and all these things. And in the beginning, when we were not really at ease, you know, processing all these things, doing the operations, he put one of his assistants in, uh, in our business for at least uh, one or two months, learning us all these little things, the little restaurant things, uh, making the orders, uh, cutting, you know, cutting stuff, cutting meats, uh, making the mix and everything. So. Can you give the names of the chefs? Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, the name is Mark Bynum. You can look him up. Uh, he's on the website. Uh, Mark Bynum, uh, Chef Creations, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he's a very dramatic person. Very big, uh, very big black like, guy, I would say. Uh, it's like a, he looks like a football player. Uh, and, uh, yeah. so. and, you know, we wanted to create a concept that was um, that doesn't require much culinary background. That was the idea of this concept. It was a beautiful concept because, yes, we love food, we love cooking, but like you know, we did not go to culinary school, so we did not have that background that allows us to uh, be these creative chefs and and create beautiful little plates. You know, we're more of creating a concept that is franchisable, that's scalable, and that's why we created this this project that requires just simple execution. Uh, once you have that recipe book, it's just execution and perfecting that execution. Um, yes, there was issues with, for example, with the Japanese chef um, um, giving us um, these certain brands, for example, to use. And obviously, you can't find certain brands in certain countries, so you had to do further testing and perfecting the recipes. Okay. So, do you have any anecdotes since you opened? Yeah, so I would say after um, now and uh, in the end of October when Hurricane Sandy came in, and uh, we were just uh, we we just saw it like one or two weeks uh, just uh, open this business, and then suddenly we were out of power for at least a week. And that day after, this this whole downtown was just was dark. There was nothing to do. There was no food. People were um, looking for something to eat and. We just went down into the fridge and we saw all these valuable meats and instead of just throwing them away, we, uh, we decided just to put them all on the grill because that's the only thing we had. We just had the gas, the gas was working. So we just threw all the meats on the grill, um, we put the sign outside, you know, meats for free, whatever. So people just started lining up and they came in and we just, uh, they, they asked for whatever was on the grill, we just gave it to them, they were tipping uh, a lot actually. Uh, it was getting a little darker and there was no light in here. People were coming in with lights, uh, even the glowing swords from Star Wars, just to, to help us out, so we could cut the meats into pieces. So that was that was a, a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, so we we threw away all the meats, uh, all the people ate it. Uh, we we got a lot of tips there, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a really fun experience. And it brought us actually, it was good for the word of mouth because we just started and people talked about it, and people actually returned after that event because. They really noticed us. We were the only place in the entire block that was actually doing something, and what we were doing was, was for free, so they really yeah. liked it. Yeah. Okay. Who are your typical customers? There's a uh, various. I would say main target market is students because we're in the university area, um, and the second would be the workers in the area. Um, there's quite a few technological startups and. Um, advertising and publishing industries here. Um, third would be the residential. So we have basically three types of customers from you know 18 all the way to like 50 and above. Yeah. Okay. Who got the idea of the mural and the drawing of the mural? <laughs> uh, you know that that evolved actually. Um, our whole concept evolved in the beginning. It started as a very chic place. It was going to be more. Oh, this you know, like um, kind of like upscale Chipotle, if you will. But you know, we decided this uh, concept had to be more fun. We just said, how can we make things more fun? Is the key word is fun, and that's when we decided, you know what? Let, let people draw on the mirrors, and we put mustaches on the mirrors, 
and we put t-shirts up on the wall, we put photos up on the wall, and you know, we're, st we're still going to do more things to make this place more fun as we think of uh, more ideas. Okay. How do you think you differentiate from uh, other yakitori joints? It's what the, makes you different? It's the intimidating factor. Many, many people, we realize, do not go to yakitori restaurants unless they have someone who introduces them to it. Uh, because it's intimidating for many, many people. It's, it's, it's food that's unfamiliar. Except when they eat it, it's, it's so simple. It's great flavors. It's, uh, that's one of the key ideas why we started this. The taste is very similar to teriyaki. The base of the sauce is very similar to teriyaki. But it's less sweet and it's lighter and it's healthier. And yakitori focuses on the, the combination of flavors of quality of meat and quality of sauce, where teriyaki is more of just sauce, sauce, sauce. And, you know, with the intimidating re Japanese restaurants, most of the menu items, for example, were, were Japanese, um, uh, Japanese names and, and people, you know, they don't really want to go into places like that. So we created something more inviting so people could just venture in. And we, we have received so many customers that that never had yakitori before coming through here, which would not happen in other yakitori restaurants that you find along New York. I was one of them, in fact. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. <laughs> de rien. So what's your favorite item on the menu? So for each of you. And me, I, me myself, I, I love the beef meatball. The beef meatball is, uh, is a combination of the, the leftovers of the pork belly and the beef tritips. So whenever we cut the beef tritips and the pork bellies, and we want it to look straight on the skewers, there are little pieces that we can use. So uh, we basically ground like 70% with of the beef, and then 30% would be the pork belly. And uh, we add a lot of delicious herbs to that: um, the parsley, the Spanish onions, uh, the ginger, um, and some secret items that we can't really tell you. But um, yeah, the beef ball is just amazing. So. Mm -hmm. And for me, I would say it's the asparagus bacon. That's what we like on the menu. It's a basically asparagus wrapped in bacon, and we have three pieces of it on the stick, and uh, it's, this is definitely our special item, and it's very popular with our, with our customers as well. And you, Johnny? Uh, it's, it's tough for me to say. Uh, <laughs> um, I would go with the chicken thigh scallions. I think I love that very, very much. It's uh, simple, it's, it's just so flavorful. And yet it has, uh, you know, it has barely any anything put on top of it. It's, it's quality chicken, quality scallions, and just our sauce and a bit of salt and pepper. That's it. That's good. So mine, in fact, is the pork belly. Ah, pork belly. Yeah, yes. pork belly, and with the bun, it's fantastic. Yeah, ah, yes, it's pork belly. So how did you come up with the menu? It's, it's really the chef, or do you make it evolve, you know, by yourself, learning a little bit more, you know, how to create combinations? Well, first we saw the menus of the other restaurants um, around New York. Uh, obviously, being a, a more uh, inviting restaurant, we did not want to go into the parts of the animals that are not familiar to most. For example, liver, gizzard, heart, uh, tongue. You know, we would love to have these menu items on, on, on our menu, but that, that defeats the concept where we really want to be this yakitori spot for everyone. Um, so we cut down a lot of the menus um, that many of the other restaurants have and, and kept it as simple as possible. Um, the signature would be obviously our meatballs that came through the chopped chef. And that differentiates as well for us because but the other yakitori spots do not have the meatballs that we do. Um, some of them would only have chicken, for example, or only pork. We have chicken, pork, and beef, and they're actually very, very good sellers, best sellers in our restaurant. People really enjoy them. How many do you sell per week, approximately? How many skewers or how many meatballs? Meatballs. Oh. Yeah, it's, I would say about. Uh, 100 meatball skewers per day, you know, maybe 150, up to 150, so... So about a thousand skewers yeah. per week. Yeah. yeah. Just the meatballs. Just meatballs. And the skewers, the rest? I'd say about 400 or more a day. Yeah. Oh, it's a lot. A lot. It's a 
above 500 a day, but yeah, times seven, 3,500 a week. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, do you have anything else to tell us about uh, bamboo tori? That I'm over to try now? that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, it's affordable. I think it's uh, it's good food, affordable, uh, great ambience. So that's why I came. In fact, I came three times since I tried it in a month, something like that. So I mean, if I come back, it's a sign. Thank you. Um, we appreciate that. And I thank you for receiving me. Now I just have a question that is unrelated to Bamboo Tori. Can you tell us a little bit what type of restaurants you like in New York? And what type of food you like? Um, I, I really like Mexican food, and uh, two of my favorite spots are Benny's Burritos and Chipotle. <laughs> I'm more of, um, I mean, the, the year before we came here, we've been in Asia and, uh, and uh, been in a lot of Asian countries, so I really like the Asian food. So I like to go over to Spice, they have uh, multiple restaurants now all over the city. And then I try to, I try to, to, try to uh, new places. Uh, uh, I tried a French place on the uh, 23rd Street, it's called uh, L'Express, I like that one too, um, so yeah. Um, I think the best experience I've had in New York City has been um, this Colombian restaurant uh, in the West Village. Is it Colombian? Yeah. Um, I lost the name at the moment, but it's this little little spot that's similar to Bementori, and they have this uh, steak marinated with oranges and lemon. Um, I can't remember the name right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. Rouge Tomat, you like that one? Oh yes, and Rouge Tomat. That is a great spot with the James Beard chef. Uh, you should try that Rouge Tomat. I tried it, I think. Oh yes, it's yes. beautiful. It's Belgian, no? Yeah, it's Belgian. I yeah, yeah, yeah. to mention BXL. BXL is good too. Yeah, I've been there multiple times actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no, I tried the Rouge Tomate a few times. Yeah, yeah Rouge Tomate. Yeah. I took my girlfriend there for anniversary and uh, I love it. Especially the five toast, you know, the sampler toast and it's all with seasonal ingredients. Beautiful. Basically, we eat about, I would say, 14 times a week we would eat here. <laughs> <laughs> so I eat it twice a day in this restaurant yeah. and Almost six days a week, so yeah. that's true. We're, we're the true test of uh, our own food. <laughs> that's good. So, what can I wish you? Well, uh, a lot of success. A lot of success. Another Mamutori uh, restaurant. Another Mamutori restaurant. And a lot of good luck. Okay. Well, good luck, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. <laughs>